well, one, I'm grateful to be here. And, you know, my journey started, um, you know, really that discovery process, that creative discovery process where music was an outlet to kind of create pathways to success that weren't traditionally there. But I found out that as much as I like being on stage, I found that it was more sustainable for me to put people on stage. And then beyond that, it was about building that community around the stage, the agents, the management, the venue owners. And along the way, I had great mentors, you know, who just, who made space for me. So I had a light bulb moment one day when I was talking to one of my mentors, I said, wow, what if, what if other musicians and artists and people in the music business or people who just wanted to be in that grassroots side of the music business were able to get the same kind of access I had? And as I got more introduced to leadership development, entrepreneurship, opportunities opened up where it's just like, yo, what if, you know, co-working was on the rise? What if we could make this available, um, you know, and have those, that ent artists and entrepreneurs have more proximity to each other with advisors, accountants, legal, all the non-sexier stuff that's so necessary. Um, to, to be sustainable. And, you know, that's how eventually I moved to Nashville. You know, in Cleveland, we were very innovative. Nashville had infrastructure. And along the way, as emerging tech got in into the mix, you know, Miami's been very uh, cutting edge when it comes to emerging technology. It's just been relationships. So, um, yeah, we just, you know, I didn't know that I was doing, I was community building um, back even when I was 18, 19 years old. Um, in promotions and throwing concerts and things like that. But it's really, it's, it's about reaching the one person. So if we can empower, so the main thing what we're doing today is, and moving forward is equipping and empowering the next generation of entrepreneurs. I love it. I love it. So how do you define a community? Oh, a community. My friend, Lou Kerner, who uh, started Crypto Mondays, he says it like this. He says a community is something that, always gives you more back if it's healthy it'll give you more back than what you put in wow more back than what you put in um to that end you know we were talking a lot about just the technical side before you joined discord and slack and facebook groups linkedin groups go down the list does it matter where your community is at and if it does why yeah it absolutely matters um it matters where you can navigate the most you know if you know, Discord or a Telegram or WhatsApp, it could it could have all the bells and the whistles in the world, but if you don't know how to navigate it, you know, it's like kind of like the phone you use. Somebody could love the greatest, you could have a great Android with all the bells and whistles, but I can't give that to to my, you know, if I you try to give that to your grandma, um, is that the best phone for her? So, you know, it's, it's depends who you are, where you're at in your leadership, where you're at in um, your relationships and what, what, what's the best for you to use? What can, what can you navigate the best? Yeah. We were talking about uh, niches, right? Um, do you think there's certain niches, niche groups that, you know, tend to prefer one platform versus another? Yeah, I was going to try to make a joke about quiches, but it's a little bit of a stretch. So, um, yeah, absolutely. You know, we see more people in the emerging tech space or what you might call the Web3 space. We see more people using Discord. Um, you know, for some of the communities that we're building are a little more 2.5. Um, you know, you have the emerging tech, but you have also people who are just, they're, they're just really strong at what they do as an entrepreneur. And uh, so, you know, and they're more open to tell, you know, Telegram, you know, we found is kind of a great medium ground. Uh, WhatsApp is, is kind of universal, but definitely we see more people uh, in the emerging tech realm using uh, Telegram or not Telegram, not just Telegram, they use Discord, 
but um, they also use Telegram too. Yeah. Uh, why do people need a community, whether they're building one or whether they're participating in one, in your opinion? Oh, that's good. Um, well, a multiple, but I think much of it is to stay unstuck. And in case you get stuck, community is, is, a, you know, in case stuck happens. Mm -hmm. What do you think that's about accountability? Yeah, it's key. I mean, we we go off of we use um, PAC proximity, accountability, and consistency are our three keys uh, to success in community. Um, con accountability is is key because you you mean well as an entrepreneur, but you don't know. You know, you need that accountability not only to make sure you do the right thing, but just to help stay on track in case stuff happens yeah yeah that's key i i've heard a lot through the last uh maybe two months that we've been doing this just about the accountability factor uh just the fact that people know what's happening on tuesdays <laughs> like i should join because i'm not doing anything else and i should just get there um as a community leader as someone who builds community how do you hold others accountable i I say the best way I do it uh, is in that you can, the one, it depends how much trust you have with the person, right? That's your, that's kind of like the current, that's the currency of business and relationships. Currency of business, relationships, community is trust. And I think the best way people are accountable, I, I just keep sending emails, keep sending text messages. And I say, that's the, soft approach and then people are more um whether they're a client collaborator uh, community member especially like our community our core shout out to all our core community members like zol brian garrett zach lindenberg um our, our good friend kiki o'connell borders people behind the scenes who who really put in work you know it's easier to pick up the phone and, and call those people or, or like, Hey, where were you at? William T. Broussard's a good friend. We just had a good talk last night. So it was like, sometimes there's people who aren't around able to be around um, at the meetings or at the calls, but we're still in contact. I think that's what it is just working the relationship. And if you're concerned, just pick up the phone and call them. Yeah. How, how important do you think it is to create connections for your community members? Oh, that's that's like drinking water. Tell me more. I mean, that's it's if it's in your DNA, you know. I, I see Dustin uh, from Podtex um, in, in the mix on here. It's like you got some people; they're just like not to say you're just born that way. You could develop it, but there's just people: Mark Cianci, um, Keith Smith, uh, Benny Pacala. These are people who got this. It's like in their blood, they have to um, make sure people get connected. Like it's just like Google, Google doing what it does. It's like you have certain people, they're just like walking search engines. And I think we all have a search engine on the inside of us. Don't be afraid to use it. Don't be afraid to cultivate that because that's really one of the low lift ways you can bring value to people and change people's lives is is uh, exercise. I mean, also John Maxwell calls it in 21 irrefutable laws of leadership, he calls it the law of intuition. You know, just develop, develop, um, develop your intuition and apply that to um, connecting people who can potentially collaborate. Yeah, it's also on the heels of the law of reciprocity, right? If I give you something, you kind of feel like you should give it back, you know, take that for however you want it. But I, I see that happening where if I can make a introduction for every single person on this call there's a pretty good probability that that individual at some point will create an introduction for me yeah it, yeah i think even even to look at it like if you look whether it's seed time and harvest or however you want to look you know um sowing and reaping whatever i mean you it doesn't have to be from that person mm -hmm. it can if you have the mindset of like zig ziglar Zig Ziglar said, if I help enough people get what they want, eventually I'll get what I want. He didn't have to get it back from those people. He just knew that um, 
he was it's like you plant enough seeds in the ground so you don't know which one's going to pop and i think that's a great that's a that's a healthy approach to look at it instead of that person and yeah most likely that person's going to do it but if you get so busy planting seed planting connections building relationships bringing value one day you're going to look up and um, like my great grandfather eventually had 15 kids around him. You know, if you do it enough, you're gonna get a big family. Right. Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, we were talking about this whole concept of community and really getting all business owners in the mindset of community and not looking at individuals as anything other than part of their community. For example, not looking at your customers as customers, but looking at them as community members that are transacting, not looking at your employees as employees, but looking at them as community members that are showing up to the tribe every day, not looking at your partners as partners, but as part of your community. Uh, tell me more about that, because I, I thought that was pretty interesting, your, your take on that. Yeah, you know, having a background in hospitality, um, that's, that's kind of what you see in the rise of hospitality is even the way Chick-fil-A, they train up their people, whereas is, you know, you don't know who's walking through the door, what they're going through. Keep that in mind, how you can change their day. I was at Longhorn uh, yesterday and uh, one of the servers was talking about their process of how they take care of that client, that customer who walks through the door. You don't know what they've been going through. So it's, it's how you take care of your team. And we're seeing a rise in hospitality in all aspects of the workplace that create healthier workplaces. And I think from a, from a hospital, like that language and that cultural language is so important. What you say is like, you ever heard, um, you ever heard somebody say like, oh, this is, you know, my employees, my employees, my staff, my, in the days ahead, that's not necessarily the healthiest community culture building uh, language. It's my team mm -hmm. instead of employee team member instead of my fan this is my family this is this is our team this is our crew you're going to see that kind of language uh, more inclusive but also part of helping mm -hmm. people feel like they're part of um your community your crew in, in a healthy community is where you can't necessarily tell where the staff and the contributors um start or end uh, you shouldn't if you're building a, a right if you're you know instead of a instead of a committee, we're having a focused group. We're having a um, intro, you know, it's like committees, instead of a committee, we're building a crew, right? What's the difference between a committee and a crew? A committee sometimes gets stuff done, right? A crew gets stuff done and has fun. Mm -hmm. Like a, like a, you were mentioning the, the roadies. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, I mean, that's, that's the ride. Like, Bands are great. The only difference also be, between a band and a brand in the music world is a band um, band plays music. A brand, a, a, a brand in the music world has revenue. The only difference between a band and a brand is the revenue. And when you're building that, and shout out to Craig Gonzalez out there, man. I just, I just love every time um, he's on these kind of calls because he gets it as uh, somebody who serves so many different sectors, including the creative world, it's like those, um, the, a good band, you know, you can raise up your, like your super fan becomes your merchant, your, your person at the merch table. That person who's working the merch table, eventually they might become the tour manager because they got in early enough and the trust was built and they just built up their people from the inside out. And I think that's a great model. I believe that's a great model for businesses um, to look at is you want people with you in the long run that you can trust and that love you, that they're there. They were there buying the tickets. They were there putting in the sweat equity and um, they got a passion and they also have a skill set. So why not put them to work? Yeah. Yeah, no, that's great. Um, it's kind of like the flywheel concept where you put in the initial effort and energy, then the thing just starts spinning. But what's carrying that momentum is the community itself versus the effort that you have to do it. And you see that a lot of times with uh, very top down organizational structures where 
you know, the org chart is very linear and it's just a boss at the top, not a leader, a boss. And the boss is like, well, I just can't take any days off because my team doesn't know what they're doing or I can never step out of the business because my, you know, he doesn't ever put in any trust and never treats the team like a team, treating them like employees, which just creates this a uh, cycle of people coming and going and coming and going down the bottom and makes it very complicated for the boss because they can never walk out. It's not until the, I believe, bosses learn how to be servant leaders that they're really investing into their team, their community, and helping them rise up to where they can learn how to do and be better than the leader themselves that the thing takes a new a new life. Uh, but it's not It's not easy to get there, but it is possible. Uh, so what do you say to folks that are in the community that say, well, I'm in sales, uh, you know, this doesn't apply to me, or I'm a software engineer communities, you know, it, it sounds nice, but it's kind of irrelevant to me, or, you know, I'm a small entrepreneur and I'm just trying to keep my head above water. All this community stuff sounds fine and dandy, but I don't really understand how it applies to me. What do, what do you say to these folks on the topic of community? Yeah, I mean, you might. You know, just look at it this way. When you're younger, and even if you're even if you're not younger, there's more than just going for the girl, right? You initially, and I'm saying this as as a guy, obviously, uh, but there's more than just going for your mate, right? That's the initial thing. Like your person that you think you're going to get a sale. But when I look at my family, when I look at my dad. When I look at my, all right, I'll just use my great grandfather, for example, he comes off the boat um, from Italy and he starts a business here in the United States and him and my great grandmother, they connect, they start having kids, they get 15 kids, right? He might think it's just about his family. Now we come together, family reunions, Christmas parties, stuff. Yeah, there's a hundred plus people at those parties, right? And I don't think my great grandfather, and it's always in honor of my great grandmother. And we we always come together in honor of my grandmother and other people, you know, too. But we all come together in honor of my great grandmother, not my great grandfather, because I don't think he cared as much as my great grandmother probably cared. But he still benefited, still built this business that's still rocking today, you know, 50, 60 years later. So I think, you know, you use the term, forget the word community. Do you want, do you want a healthy organization? Do you want a healthy team? Do you want a legacy? Do you want a legacy? Do you want people, how do you want people to remember you? Because if it's all just about the sale, that's great, but you're probably doing this already. And this is why I think you personally are set up to build a healthy community is you make it about the one. If you make it about the one, that can reach the many. All you need is one person that can reach the many. All you need to do is keep reaching the one and eventually you'll have the many. So it's not about the numbers. It's about the quality of relationships. It's about rich relationships. Do you want quality, rich relationships where there's trust? Like Stephen R. Covey says in The Speed of Trust, if you want, um, if you want things to go slow and cost much, have very little trust. If you want things to go faster and more efficiently and cost less build trust so whether you're looking to build a community of thousands of people or you just want a healthy team that can multiply that's why i believe the, that's why tim also has sparked this wildfire now of we believe 2024 is the year of community because we're going to see organiz major organizations with many people start to shift to micro communities because there's more value that they can bring to their people, micro communities and focus groups instead of just traditional committees. And we're gonna see um, every day mom and pop start to rise and build um, leverage technology and build healthier organizations without ceilings because they're applying timeless principles and using um, software as a service, they're using the technology. Yeah, we had talked about community and culture, I, I believe was how we were labeling this. And uh, thanks, Billy, for joining. He said he has to bounce. Um, so, you know, culture is not something that you can manufacture. You go into an organization, you realize that the culture is just toxic 
and that something needs to change. And a lot of times we say the fish stinks from the head because whoever's the leader is often responsible for, not often, they are the sole person responsible for the culture because they allow things to occur within the organization. How important is it for you as uh, the head to monitor the, the culture of your community, of your organization? Yeah, being aware being aware of it, what's going on is, is important about that. It's just a healthier, when it comes to culture, the, the part of it is how healthy are you? You can only, you know, you're, if you don't like what the people around you are doing, <clears throat> or if you don't like, if you don't feel like the conversations you're having are fruitful or beneficial that they're having, it's like, what are you feeding yourself? How healthy are you? So you you know, if you're concerned about all the people you have wrong, you know, around you, if you're in like pointing your finger, oh man, I wish this guy could do this. Well, don't be afraid. Take a five minute break, go to the restroom, look at the mirror and say, are you the problem? Then smile at yourself and say, I think you're also the solution. So turn this thing around. What are you reading? What are you listening to? And uh, how are you treating people? You know, it's like, how do you actually see people? Do you actually think they're rock stars? And do you actually believe you're a rock star? Like on the Power of Partnerships call, it was about, yo, when I get up, when these feet hit the ground, um, you know, I'm I'm taking ground. Mm -hmm. And I'm taking names and I'm not going to be, I'm not going to apologize. I was made to make a difference. And if you believe, if you can see the gold, you know, some people mine Bitcoin, other people, um, we were talking yesterday, William T. Broussard, about oil mining and things like that, how important that is. All you're called to do as a, um, whether you call yourself a leader, an entrepreneur, we believe we're called to mine the gold in people. We're just mining treasure that's already there in people, helping them see it in themselves, and then helping extract that value and funnel that to others where, where it's supposed to go. Yes. Um, and honestly, I would say that is probably the biggest nugget takeaway for anything that you're building, because you can only build so much. And there's a lot of talk on social media about, you know, solopreneurs and look what I did sitting on my Lamborghini and my Ferrari all by myself, sitting in my bedroom, knocking out emails. And I, I learned the script. And if you want to become a high income earner, take my... It's all I'm calling it baloney. There, I mean, that is the the there's the few folks that can actually pull that off. They're the complete outliers. But for the rest of us, it's all about investing in other people, teaching them, training them, developing them, and allowing them, providing them opportunities so they they can scale and build and we can grow something together. Uh, no man is an island, so you you simply cannot do things alone. At least I have not seen it in my experience of working with thousands of businesses. Uh, you have to build something great. So I, th I think it's a pretty like a solid dialogue here. Uh, one last question I have for you uh, as it relates to the community and the culture is how to get started. How do people like what's what are useful practical practical tools that people can use to get started on building their team? Yeah, great, great question. You know, I was working on some guidelines last night and the thing that hit me is find your 10. You know, we're, we're working on, you know, we've been applying that a hundred people build community with a hundred people in a hundred days. Mm -hmm. We're working on that model and being those personal case studies and, but find your 10. Sometimes you got to go through the hundred to get your 10. Do you have a hundred numbers in your phone of people that you've called or had conversations with? Do you have a hundred emails? Um, do you have a hundred people find the 10 people that you you have something in common with you know that are solid i would say these three things find 10 people that you trust that are solid and can collaborate trust solid people solid character you're like yo that's a solid person they're good and that can work well with others and start having conversations with them hey you know, I'm thinking about starting a focused crew, starting, a, I'm thinking about doing like a monthly call around um, diversity and technology, or, hey, I'm thinking about doing, 
a call. I'm thinking about doing a monthly call uh, for musicians and actors to be more entrepreneurial. Um, would you be up to join that with me? And yeah. all they say, yeah, but you know, I don't know. I don't know how to like, they'll do that or whatever. They're like, I don't know how much I can contribute. You just say this and all just show up. I'm going to show up. This is what Tim taught me with Andre Powerman. Tim said, I'm going to show up. And if anybody else shows up, awesome. You know, you have those conversations and then, and then check this out. Do they have a hundred people and do they have 10? Do they have 10 people that they trust that are solid and can work well with others? I say, give them an opportunity to invite those people, get it cooking with your core team. And then, but don't be afraid to, to just start inviting people to do the very thing that you did. And, and the second part of that is if you don't feel like you have the time or you're ready to like build your own crew or start your own micro community or, or major macro community, just hop into others. Mark Cianci is a great um, example of this. There's others on the call. Uh, shout out Jack T. Um, Zal is doing a great job at this also. We see plug in and contribute what you can to communities that you benefit from the most. And watch, just like our friend Lou said, uh, he said, if you put a great community is, you get way more out of it than you put in. Yeah. I love the, I love the concept of starting small and getting 10 uh, because I think there's a real practical takeaway here for everybody. Uh, as someone who's been in entrepreneurship for, for a long time and has worked in a silo for a long time, um, everybody knows people in your ecosystem. I and mean, that's just what it is about being in business. I, I work a lot in advertising and marketing and management consulting and finance. So I just, those are the people I know. So if I could put together a group of 10 people that say, hey, let's just get together every week and just talk about what we're seeing. Right. I mean, how much value can be added in there? It's like, hey, what kind of business model are you guys, even if it's semi-competitive it's fine people like to share information you'd be surprised i actually know most of the competitors in every business that i'm involved in um very well because we just jump on a call and talk about talk shop you know what are you guys pricing this at or how's that working or what's the deal flow it's the sales cycle how long like just talk right you'd be surprised how many people actually just want to talk and have a platform to get it off their chest and it doesn't need to be a massive platform the other bit about showing up like i said i'm just going to show up every tuesday <laughs> is if even just one person joins, and this is goes back to before you joined, I was talking about the heart of community. Even if just one person joins, but we're able to have some kind of meaningful interaction that one hour for the day, and we both get something out of it, how is either one of us at a loss for that time? Right now, you know, capitalist Tim says, yeah, well, you could have been doing business prospecting, you could have been doing this, you could have been making money and you're wasting your time, right? But that's just small, limited mindset. It's small belief. It's like, it's the closed hand versus, you know, the, the open hand. It's it, exactly. So um, I love it, Brandon. And thank you so much for the generosity of taking the time and talking to us about all this. Any final takeaways and where can people that don't know you find you? Yeah, I'm on LinkedIn. Uh, Brandon David is one word, uh, last name Hawkins. And uh, Instagram is pretty good too. Brandon David underscore Music Tech Connect. And uh, emails Cleveland Nashville at gmail.com. Cool.